When you first open FilterStorm Pro, it will uh, begin reading in your iPad's library and generating these nice big thumbnails for all of your images. Uh, if you, on the other hand, import a photo from uh, another app or paste from the clipboard, you'll get a new collection in uh, this FS Pro library section. So if you go into a collection, you can see you get these nice big thumbnails compared to what you get in the uh, iPad library. You can make them bigger or smaller, depending on how you like looking at them. Let's just turn that back a bit. Um, <clears throat> and so you can go through, you can drag them around to rearrange. We can also order by date, for example. Um, and you can assign star ratings. So there's a few ways to do that. You can take two fingers and drag down or up to increase and decrease the number of stars. You can also select images by tapping on them, then bring up the star and you can uh, rate one, two, three. And when you have things rated, you can just bring up your star, uh, star menu and filter to one star higher, two star higher. And this will be saved so that when you back out and go back in, you'll see only the ones uh, that you've rated. I can go to the metadata tab here, and I can see EXIF information. I can add captions, keywords, uh, various uh, IPTC tags, and I can go here to settings and choose from a number of uh, different IPTC tags uh, the ones that I'm going to use. So if I wanted to turn off subject and location, for example, I can just do that and it will only show me the ones I want, and you can, when you uh, fill them out, you can use these next previous buttons to go through them and type in your information. You can also uh, go here to the sets button, the plus button, and fill out information here. Uh, save it as a set, so uh, I can just send skydiving, for example. Save it. And so, if I just hit that button, it'll add the information to the images. You can select all, deselect all here, and uh, change the title of the collection there. Um, and I can also uh, search in here for tags, for example. Those four I tagged to skydiving will come if I search for them. Um, something related that's due in FilterStorm Pro 2 are smart collections. Uh, if I scroll through here, you can see I have some, I have a couple uh, recent roller derby bouts that I was at. Um, so I can add a smart collection here and type in derby, for example. And so when I go in there, you can see pictures from all the collections with everything tagged for roller derby. I can then go and uh, filter for a star rating. And so now uh, if I shoot another derby match, um, I can just come back in here and it'll be updated to all the starred uh, start images from Derby Bouts. So let's uh, go to edit an image. This is uh, the image I always use for these filter storm demonstrations because it illustrates things fairly well. Um, so first off the cropping tool is pretty simple. You just pinch and swipe to size the image and place it. You can uh, drag these to set the uh, aspect ratio custom, or you can come down here and use a standard aspect ratio. 
and just hit the check to apply. I'm just going to hit the uh, X button and not do that. can rotate standard controls. Uh, straightening gives you a little overlay. And I have borders and several other tools here. Let's go into filters. Uh, most of these tools use uh, sliders like this. You can uh, actually drag from anywhere on the slider. You don't have to uh, put your finger on top of the uh, on top of the the marker. You can just put your finger on and go up or down. It will increase or decrease. Uh, and you can use this button over here to toggle between putting the preview on the right, the left, or on the full image. I'm going to cancel that for now. Uh, and there's a switch down here. If I hit that. Now the Sliders are on the right hand instead of the left hand. So let's, I'm going to take uh, curves right now and show uh, the masking tools a bit. So let's shrink this down. Um, I can set from various uh, the different channels. So now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the mask to fill in the sky to bring the sky back. So I'll go, um, the check will apply it to the whole image. The brush icon will bring you to edit the mask. I'm just going to hit that. And uh, so there's a bunch of tools here. We can use a brush. I can change settings of the brush. Okay. Uh, this is the eraser. You can use a color picker to change everything of a given color. A simple opacity slider. Um, and this is a vignette, so I can make a. Just cancel that and let me just erase this a bit. The one I'm going to use for this, though, is. Uh, gradient. I have linear gradients, I have circular gradients, I have these uh, linear gradients on lines. I'm going to use a circular gradient. So apply it like that to give a bit of a smoother transition. And then I'm going to come in here to the skydivers and use my eraser to just Make sure I don't lose any, apply it to the skydivers and lose the, uh, detail from them. There we go. So that's good. I'll just apply that there. Now, uh, we do have layers in Filter, Sto uh, Filter Storm Pro. They're turned on right now, so you can see that mask and uh, the change I made. Uh, they're off by default, actually. Um, and if they were off, what would it would do is simply you'd make the mask and then it would automatically flatten. Uh, the advantage to keeping layers off is that uh, it remembers whether you have layers on or off when you edit an image. and um, it can do, perform some uh, optimizations when layers are off that will make uh, ex the final export of the image faster. So I do recommend keeping layers off um, unless you're going to be doing something a bit more complex. But it's fine. Uh, I guess I'll go through some of the uh, things you can do with layers right now. So if I hit this plus button, it'll create a new layer, the contents of which are uh, the flattened image. So this layer as it exists uh, is just the combination of those two layers. Um, so I can then go, I, if you tap on the image, you can, you'll edit the image, so I can go and I can blur that layer. Just apply that. And I can change the opacity. And change the blend mode, for example. Uh, 
don't know. Uh, you can also drag the layers to rearrange them. Um, I can go ahead and turn that off for now. Okay, so let's uh, go back to curves. Now I'll set it for oops, point. Set the curves to make uh, the parachute itself a bit more dramatic. And go back to my brush. And let's bring this back up. Brush that on. Um, so now I'm going to take my clone tool and get rid of some of these uh, spots where my lens was dirty that day. Basically you just uh, move this loop to where you want the source to be and then it will copy from where the loop is to where your finger is. Just get rid of these pretty quickly. Oh, a terrible job up here, didn't I? So let's erase the original. And just apply that. There we have an edited image. So now if I back out, it'll save these changes and you'll see there's now a double outline showing there's a couple versions. So I can double tap on that. And you can see there's the original and final version. So uh, I can go ahead now when I want to export, select a bunch of images, go to my export tab. So I just check the places I want to uh, send them to. I can uh, go to the delivery settings. Um, here I can change the max export size and the JPEG quality it saves that. Um, and this confirm before exports which will make that those options come up when you uh, go to export. So uh, I can also set a, it, make it a scale as it saves. Um, if I want to uh, send it at a particular size. I can put in, say, uh, 2000 by 2000, and it'll make sure it fits in a 2000 pixel box. So if, just check the places you want to send it to, hit the Send Photos button, hit Send, and it'll reprocess the images and send them out. Uh, if you want to set up an FTP location like this, you hit the plus button, give it a name, uh, set it to be FTP, and then you have here address folder, user and password. It will uh, create folders if you specify a folder that doesn't exist. And you can send original uh, large version. You can also send the uh, automation, which is, uh, so let's go over automations quickly. So uh, automations are saved sets of actions that um, you can reapply to other images. So for example, I could uh, add a border and uh, give it a name, a uh, very creative name called border. So let me just go and apply that. Um, so if, for example, I wanted to um, put up a bunch of images on Flickr or whatever, um, and put on this border and perhaps scale it to a certain size, I could uh, put in this, uh, just, just scale it to fit in a thousand pixels. There we 
No. So now I have this version. I can uh, tap on it and hit save automation, give it a name. So now I have in here uh, this test automation, so I can just select my images and tap on it. And it will go ahead and apply those changes to all these images. It works for anything, so if you uh, you know, shoot an event and want to apply the same uh, curves adjustments to a bunch of images, you can do that. Uh, it's uh, fairly flexible. And uh, that's my demonstration of FS Pro 2.